How's it going beer fans? Today we have the beautiful BMW X3 and today we're going to be going over some really cool hidden tips, tricks and features. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, Beam Review, what we do here is showcase all the latest BMWs. We also do some really cool hidden tips and tricks. If that's something that you guys are into, subscribe to the channel because we put out content every single week. So ladies and gentlemen, today we have a beautiful BMW X3. And what we're going to do today is just go over some really cool hidden tips and tricks for this vehicle. And now I know that BMW X3s are one of the top selling BMWs. So I'm actually going to be doing this for every single car or SAV. So definitely subscribe to the channel if eventually you plan on seeing your car as well. And a lot of these hidden tricks and features are actually featured in one of my videos as well, which is right above here. But I did want to do one on every single car just so we can get more in depth with every specific vehicle. For this video, we're going to be going around the whole entire car. And again, basically, we're just going to be going over the features that you might not catch initially. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be walking around the whole entire vehicle. We'll start with the outside and then we'll go on the inside and go more in depth with it. But right off the bat, one of the first ones that you definitely need to know about is how to lock the car from the door handle and then so the way you do that is if you see these little stripes right along here just go ahead and press that and again the key fob does have to be around three feet of the door handle so if i go ahead and press that it'll lock the car so that locks the car and if you want to open the vehicle just simply just grab the door handle just like you normally would and that unlocks the car and again depending on which bmw you have most of them all four door handles are going to have up those little stripes which allow you to lock the car. And also one other thing to mention about locking and unlocking the vehicle, all the newer BMWs, they have this feature called comfort access. And what that will allow you to do is if you have the key fob within your pocket, you can actually walk up to the car and then the vehicle can unlock itself. You could also have a set to where if you walk away from the vehicle, the vehicle can, can unlock itself as well. BMWs, they also have this little kick feature in the back where you can kick beneath the car to undo the trunk. Now, this specific X3 does not have it because BMW is actually having some more chip issues in regards to the send answer that goes below there. Uh, so this BMW X3 does not have it, but if your vehicle does have the kick to open the trunk feature, the way that you would do it is simply just go front to back at a medium pace, and then the whole trunk would undo itself. And you can also use the same kick to have the trunk go down as well. Now, many people, they make the mistake of actually wiggling their foot like that, which is what you don't want to do. You simply just want to go straight front to back at a medium pace and then that will undo the trunk if your vehicle has that feature and if it doesn't no worries because there is a handle or a button right behind here which can undo the whole trunk now the biggest things to point out about the trunk is that there is this cargo cover which is right over here and the way that you would release that is actually with this hidden button that's right over here so if you were to hit that as you saw the cargo cover did just undo itself and then now you can pull it out from both sides also, some other cool things to mention in my previous video as well. If you need a 12 volt plug in, that is actually right over here. And this button right here actually pulls out a little hook, which you can use to hook on your grocery bags. Now, one of the things to mention about the X3 is that for the previous generations, they used to have a handle right here and right there to fold down the seats flat. Well, they no longer have that. So the way that you would do that is by going to the back right door right there. And then if you look right in here, this is what you would press to fold down the seat. And again, it's easier to do it from the side than the way that I'm doing it right now. But that's how you would fold on the seat. Same thing for the other side as well, right there. And if you wanted to do the middle, there is a separate switch for that one as well to fold that down as well too. This is what you would push in. Now, if your vehicle does have run flat tires, you're not going to have your spare here. But instead, you're going to have tons and tons of more space. So you can hide some things right along there. Many of the BMWs, they're also going to come with this little box right here, which just has the lug nuts that were replaced by the wheel locks that are already inside the wheel. And if you were to look at this little bag that we have right here, all you have here is just a simple little tow hook that you could use to plug into your bumper and then get your vehicle towed. And again, that is pretty much it for the trunk, but definitely some cool little details there that will definitely help you out in the future. Now, if you want to close the trunk, there's two ways to do it. This button on the left will close the trunk. This button on the right will close the trunk and lock the car so you can, so you can actually walk away. As, as you're hitting this button as well. Oh, and just in case you were wondering where that tow hook would go, there is a little cutout right over here that you can push in and then you can remove that cutout and then you can plug in your tow hook straight into there. But hopefully but hopefully you don't have to use that because that's only used if your vehicle is stuck somewhere or for, for, or for whatever reason it, it needs to get towed. Now back over here, we have the gas pump door or gas pump lid. And the way that you would do this is just make sure the vehicle is unlocked and simply just press on it. And then you have our fuel cap right over here. Now you can actually take this out. And as mentioned in my previous video, again, you can place it right there. 
Um, if you're in the US and if you're not sure what gas your X3 might need, there is a little handy little sticker right over here. But I do believe for the US, the 89 is the absolute minimum and the 91 is going to be the recommended. And both of these numbers, they actually, they actually fall on, on the gas pump as middle or higher. But yeah, simply placing your gas right down there. There is a little hole right here. So if you do spill your gas, uh, the excess gas would actually just would actually just go into there and go out. Don't worry too, too much about this little cutout. That is the same cutout that is used for the diesel X3s because that's where the def fluid would actually go into. Now going right down here, nothing too, too crazy. You do, you can actually pull this guy out. And if you pull this out, you can actually see that the cup holders are actually right here as well. So you could place your cups or bottles in here. And if we're looking right down here as well, we do have USB chargers, but they are USB-C chargers, which is actually better than your standard USB because those will actually charge your devices three times faster. Now at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump into the vehicle. One last thing to mention on the front and back, the vehicle sensors are actually these little dots that you see right there, right there. And there's two right near the gills that you see right over there. Sorry, that's kind of blurry. And of course, one on the other side as well. But we're gonna jump into the vehicle and we can check out some more of the interior stuff. Now, simply what we have here is pretty basic. You do have your lock and unlock, duh. But the way that you would use your seating assignment right over here, I do recommend setting up a driver profile first before you go ahead and set up your settings. Uh, but if you want to save your seat, what you would do is, is hit set and then go ahead and hit one. And then same thing for number two, just hit set and then two. And that's how you would save your seat. And going right down here, nothing too, too crazy here. Uh, one thing to mention though, is that this is the child lock for the windows. Uh, the child lock for the doors is actually separate. If you want to know where that was, that is inside the door seal. And you can find that there for the back child lock. And then right over here, many would question what this button is. That is simply to fold in the mirrors. And then that closes both of the mirrors, as you can see. I'm going to open that back up. This button right here is your selector switch for whichever side mirror you want to adjust. So if you want to adjust the left one, just simply move this guy to the left. And then you can go ahead and use your dial to adjust your side mirror there. Looking at this switch right over here, this is the trunk. And if I were to push down, it'll undo the trunk. If you guys don't believe me, there it is. And... As mentioned in my previous video, if you hold this up, and I'm holding it up the whole time, and I'm gonna hold it until the trunk goes all the way down. So that's how you would close your trunk. Now we have our lighting controls right here. The easiest way to set it is just set it with the headlight with the A on it, that stands for auto. So simply just leave it at that, and then you're good to go. This scrolly knob is actually used to control the brightness on your screen and right now it's not doing it because it's not dark enough but if it gets dark enough until whenever your headlights are on then that's whenever you can actually see the screen start to dim now many of the bmws they have these buttons right over here these are simply park lights now you might question when i would need to use that but basically this is the park light for the right tail light and this is the park light for the left tail light most of the time you're not going to need to worry about the park lights but if you're parked in a really dark spot for let's just say like a half hour or so. If you keep on one of the park lights, it helps to see, it helps for the vehicles that are traveling behind you to know that you're parked there. Moving right along, we do have a, a button here called BC. Now what BC stands for is board computer. And BMW has been having this button for the last 20 years, it feels like, but all that BC does, and again, this is iDrive 7. And if you were to hit BC, it will change the screen that you see on the right. So that's horsepower torque, that is a G meter. Both of those are sport displays. And this is a really popular one that will actually show your music that is currently playing. And I'm still continuing to hit BC to scroll through all these, if you guys were wondering. And that will actually show what gear you're in. And again, um, this is actually MPG. And yes, this is your total miles. And excuse this red line right here. Uh, there is plastic still on here because this is a brand new vehicle. So that's what that red line is in case you're wondering. But our trip meter is actually right here. Now BMWs, they only have one trip. Uh, most of the previous cars, they had trip A, trip B, but this vehicle just has one trip, as you can see right here. And many do not know how to reset that, but the way that you would do it is simply hold down BC and that will reset the trip. Now, if your vehicle has this button right on the left, what that stands for is automatic high beams. And that is super useful, especially at nighttime. Right now it won't work, but at nighttime when I, uh, whenever your headlights are on, go ahead and just hit this. You'll see a headlight with an A pop up right here. And basically, the way that auto high beams work is if it is is if your vehicle detects an oncoming car, it will actually turn off the high beams, 
and then whenever it's pitch black again, it'll turn the high beams back on. Cruise control we have here, many people do not use this, but this is the on and off switch. You can set your speed, resume, cancel. Uh, many question what LIM is, limit. And what limit is, is if you go ahead and press it, you can use the scrolling knob to set up your speed on what you want the limit to be. Uh, so, let's, so let's just say, for example, if we were driving, we would hit limit and then set our speed to 80 miles per hour. The vehicle will not let you go past 80 miles per hour. So it's great for speeding tickets, put it that way. Heated steering wheel, this vehicle does have that. So we have our heated steering wheel button right here. And of course we have our horn. We have our multimedia controls right here. This is the plus and minus for the volume. You can skip tracks by hitting this arrow or this arrow. And this scrolling knob will actually show your media that is currently playing. Again, we don't have anything that's playing right now because we don't want to get flagged. This would actually show radio stations if I were to use that on the screen on the right. Now, if your vehicle has a head-up display, you if, if you were to play with this button and this button, you would actually see it on your head-up display. Now, this vehicle does not have the head-up display. So that's why whenever I'm hitting this button, it's showing up here. The phone button, very useful. You can use it to, yes, pick up a phone call, but you can also use this button to hang up a phone call as well. We have our voice command here. Now this one is probably my favorite one because there's two ways to use this. If you press it one time, yes, you get the BMW voice command. But if my phone was connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can actually hold this down and then you can get Siri. And Siri would be the one that you would use to make phone calls and write text messages, etc. Moving right along to this middle screen right over here, we have our hazards, of course. Um, many would question what this button is. And all this button is, is for safety. Now you can see that everything's on, but if you want to configure your safety features, you can do that straight through here. Now everything's set pretty good the way that it is. The only one that I, I will mention to you folks is the steering intervention for lane departure. Now, if steering intervention is on, then basically if, 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 if the car senses that you just left your lane without using your blinker, it'll give you a nudge on the steering wheel, which can be good, but it can be scary and many times it can be annoying. So if you don't like that feature, just simply hit this button and then that will deactivate that feature, but still keep lane departure on. So you'll still get a vibration whenever you need it. And again, that was all in here, but going straight to the climate control toolbar, we have our heated seats here, the frosters, and everything here is pretty self-explanatory. And then quickly moving right down here, we do have our volume knob here but you can actually push this as well to mute whatever's playing. Now, BMW has these memory keys, which are super useful. You can actually hover your finger to see what your presets are. Not only can you use this to save your radio stations, you can also use this to save your favorite setting as well. So let me demonstrate for you what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna go into settings and where it says interior lighting. Let's just say, for example, if I want to preset one of these memory keys as a shortcut to go into interior lighting. So I just set that up and now I'm at my home screen. And now of course, if I wanted to go into the interior lighting super quick, all you have to do is hit that guy and then you're there. Moving right along, we have a digital key card. Many of the BMWs have this, the, uh, the newer ones do, but this digital key card is good for a one year trial subscription. So keep that in mind. But the way that you would use this is, is simply take it out this pop, simply take it out this plastic case that you see. Um, and then the way that you would do it is let's just imagine if this was our door handle, you just tap and hold it briefly to lock and unlock the car. Then if you take it and then place it right here where we have our phone charging pad, you can actually place it there and then you can actually start your car all without your real keys. Now, many would question why we would have this. While well, this is very, very useful to just keep in your wallet or purse, it's also really great to use whenever you're going to the beach, hiking or swimming. So you don't have to take your real keys. You can actually just completely operate your vehicle with simply just just this little key card. Now, this vehicle does have a charging pad. Again, BMW did have a big shortage on this, but this vehicle does have it. There's two ways to tell if your vehicle has, sorry, three ways to tell if your vehicle has a, a wireless charging pad. Uh, the first thing you want to do is actually check your window sticker, and then it'll actually say wireless charging pad on the sticker. Uh, the other two ways that you can also tell if it has it or not, if the charging pad was not a wireless charger, you would not see this little thing right here, this little thunderbolt. Um, and then you would also not see this guy right here, which actually turns blue whenever your phone is charging on the pad. We have a 12 volt right here. It's not a cigarette lighter, but you can actually use that if you need to charge your phone or charge many phones. You can actually use that as a USB adapter, it's very useful. And going right down here to the center console, we're, we're simply just gonna go left to right. Now, Many might not see this button here. This specific vehicle has the Parking Assistance Plus package, which means that you simply get a really cool camera system. 
and this is actually your drive recorder as well so on your window sticker if you're going through it this is actually your drive recorder which i'll come back to this but again this vehicle does have the 3d view so that's why this guy is here now all x3s they have this guy right here which is simply parking assistance but this vehicle again has a 3d view so you get a more advanced view you can actually get a top-down view if you have the parking assistance plus package along with this 3d view you can actually have the have your vehicle park itself which is this automatic parking right here you can actually do backup assistant right here as well if you all do not know what that is simply just comment down below and i can explain it to you but also don't forget this little tab right here that is a bit hidden you can also get a 3d view and then this will actually show your whole 3d view if your vehicle has gesture control, you can actually do one of these to twist and turn the whole view as well. This vehicle does not have gesture control, so you can't do that. Um, and then the last thing that we saw in this little hidden tab right here was car wash. Now, if you see car wash, you can actually see where you would need to align your, your tire to the rail. Now, if I were to turn the steering wheel, that the lines are moving. And that was very, very useful to get your car right into the car wash. And again, all this stuff was straight through this little P with the cone beside it, parking assistance. And again, this vehicle does have the 3D view, hence why we have all these really cool features. If your vehicle does not have the 3D view, then you're simply just gonna see your vehicle with sensors in the front and in the back. Now this button is starting to disappear, but this is the engine start stop feature where you can have your BMW turn off the feature where it turns off the engine at the red lights to save gas. If you do not like that feature, just go ahead and hit this and just make sure the light's on. The light's on, that means that the feature is off. Again, many of the newer BMWs, they're starting to not have this. So just keep that in mind. And of course we have our engine start stop here. We have our different drive modes here. Now I did do a separate video discussing all the drive modes, but the main mode that we're always gonna be in is gonna be comfort. Your vehicle will always start in this mode every time you get into it. But if you wanna have some more fun or if you're running late for work, you can hit sport and then you can select what kind of sport you want and again if you want the details on what these different sport modes are you can watch the video that i did i believe two videos ago but i did go very very in depth with all these different sport modes as well um, again great to use if you're running late for work or if you just want to have some more fun and eco pro is great if you're going to go on a long trip all that this will do is just maximize your fuel efficiency it will help you save gas and then it'll help you coast more which also helps you save gas. And lastly, it'll control the amount of air that's blowing through the system in order to save even more gas. Right down here, they did change the, the design of hill descent control. Now they have this button right here, which, which simply just stands for hill descent control. Super useful if you're going down a steep hill and you don't want your vehicle to, to speed up all by itself. It's also great to use if you see snow or ice on a hill and you just want to go at a nice slow pace. Auto H, many, many, many question on what this is. I'd say only about 15 to 20 percent of people know what this is but if auto h is on you can see your green light here and you can also see that auto h is on right there if it wasn't so blurry there you go now what auto h does is if it's on you can actually just imagine driving your vehicle and then once you come to a full stop you could actually take your foot off the brake and then the vehicle will still hold in place it's super super useful if you're going through a starbucks drive through or if you're just stuck in stop and go traffic, or if you're driving in the city where you might encounter long, long red lights. Emergency brake is right here. You can pull up on it to engage it, push down to disengage it. And right here, we do have our famous BMW controller, the iDrive controller, great, great design. And if you're wondering and getting a little confused or scared about all these little buttons here, don't worry, because simply all these little buttons that you see right here, are just shortcuts to go into the main menus as the same ones that you see right here. So basically shortcut keys, if you hit media, it'll go to wherever media is playing. You have your home button here, which is very useful. And whatever map is currently active, you can use map to go straight into that. And these three, I would say, are the most popular ones. You can also use these three here too, but they're not as useful. You do have our back button here if you want to go back a screen. That actually brings back the previous screen and option. Don't worry too, too much about that one. You're not going to get too, too much out of option, but if you were to hit it, you can actually get help or turn off your control display. And again, option will change depending on whichever screen you're in. So if you're in navigation and then you hit option, then you're going to have some different selections pop up as well. Here now inside here, the only thing you have is a USB-C port. And again, as mentioned before, that will actually charge your phone three times faster. All the newer iPhones and Androids are starting to come out with those and it's very, very useful. Uh, but just in case you didn't have that, 
we do have our standard USB, which is kind of hard to see, but it's this guy right there. You do still have your standard USB to charge your phone. Moving right along top, we do have our sunroof. Now there's a few different ways that you can use this, but if you do a hard push, you can actually see the sunroof go all the way back all by itself. And then again, this button controls both the shade and the glass. Um, I'm not gonna do the glass right now because we do still have plastic on top, so there's no point on doing that. Uh, but yeah, hard push front or back will control both the shade and the glass as you, as you can see the shade coming right back and if you want to do a tilt you just push inward and then it'll do like a little tilt if you have a new bmw your vehicle does have the sos included for four years you would press this and then press that to make the sos call now again that is good for four years and it kind of works like AAA. it'll go call bmw assist first and then you can tell bmw assist what type of help you need and then they will take it from there. But yes, you can use that if, if you think you might have a flat tire or for whatever reason the car is not working right and you're stranded, you can always use the SOS button. It works all the time and it's included for four years with your vehicle, if it's brand new. But now, I just wanted to touch on this iDrive 7 that we have. Now, iDrive 8 is starting to come out, but many of the BMWs that are currently out right now in 2022 are still gonna have the iDrive 7. Uh, but iDrive 7, personally, I like it better than iDrive 8. Um, but that's just my thoughts. And again, the way that we use this is you have your main menus right here. So everything music is, is in here. And then if you want to connect your phone or adjust your phone or change phones, you're going to do that in COM, which stands for communication. And right over here, we have our navigation. And then all your fine-tuning settings or car settings are all going to be in car. We have BMW apps here, but... Um, it's not that that useful. You do have your BMW apps here. There are a lot more, but this vehicle is not fully activated yet. Uh, but here you can actually go into your BMW messages to see if there's any software updates. Uh, but in my opinion, BMW apps are not that useful. And if we look right over here, we have our widgets. Now you can actually customize all these. The way that you would do that is click and hold, and then it brings up your setup menu. You can click on this little box to change this widget that we have here. And then you can change that to whatever you want. There's many different ones and it's really good to create and personalize your main screen that you have right here. You can also delete pages and add up to more than 20 pages as well. And that is also a little trick that you guys might not catch. And I think I just missed it, but we do have our wipers here. If you do one notch up, it goes into its auto mode and simply set it and forget it. If you want to do the rear wiper, just do a little twist on this. And this little scrolling knob just controls the speed of the, of the wiper as well. And yeah, guys, pretty much it for the X3. There's not a whole, whole lot that you probably already don't know, but these were the little things that you definitely should know. And that's the reason why I did this video. And again, if you want to see it for another BMW, just simply write it down below. These are the features and tricks they might not initially catch. They're very uncommon. Uh, but definitely more of the finer details that will be very, very useful as you continue to own your BMW and even many, many other. Because a lot of these tricks, they're actually very, very old as well, too. So many of the previous BMWs had. But let me know if, if you all had any questions. Simply just write it down below and, I, and I'll be more than happy to help you. Again, this is D from Beamer View. Subscribe to this channel. We got tons and tons of more content going out every single week. So stay tuned for the next one.